Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome to my little corner of the internet and we have a new backdrop today. So I'm super happy with this new setup, it's so cute, it's so cute. It took me an entire day with Adam's help to make this look like a nice living area. It looks like I live here doesn't it? It's all an illusion, but today we are going to do a monthly favorites and fails video. I have so many products to talk about today. All these new makeup y things. We have a couple fails for you. They're not going to be in any particular order. We're just going to run into this video. I think it's going to be a long one because there are so many products. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to today's video. Alright guys, as always, all makeup on this channel is cruelty-free solar products to talk about in today's video. And if I like something you dislike or I dislike something you like, it's all good. It's just makeup. It's my own personal opinion. Let's go ahead and get started. I have these in like little tiny piles of like categories-ish. So let's start off with face stuff. And I'm wearing a lot of these products on my face today just so we can like see them. But for face stuff, let's start off with a primer. So I'm using this primer today, and I just did a review of all my primers. I'll leave that linked in the description box for you. But this is the Laura Mercier Oil Free Foundation Primer. I've talked about the regular foundation primer before and the hydrating one, but this is an oil free one. So if you saw my primer video, this was in there. I've been liking this a lot because it's really easy on the skin. Um, it's not super matte. It's really like a hydrating kind of formula, but it's a lot more slick than their hydrating one. It's not very moisturizing feeling it's just kind of like a slick kind of I guess like oil free texture but it feels slightly oily if that makes sense so this is what it looks like it comes off slightly green and as you can see it's very liquidy it has like a little bit of hydration -y feel to it but it doesn't feel oil free even if it is it doesn't feel like it's greasy or anything but it doesn't feel oilless but I really like it and I don't know why. I think it's because it's more hydrating than the regular foundation primer. And it's not as, like, skincare -y feeling as the regular primer. So it is advertised as an oil-free primer. But it has, like, that, that slickness to it. But when it dries down, it has a little bit of tackiness. So I hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't. But I really like this oil-free primer right now. Okay, so next up we have two foundations. This first one we used in a full face first impressions video. This is the Soap and Glory Kick Ursh All Day Wear Foundation. This is apparently a dupe for the CYO. They're owned by the same parent company. Apparently the formula is very similar, but CYO is being discontinued. So I got this from Target. It's in the shade 01. It is a little dark. It's a little dark. Um, but for being 01, like I wish it had a better shade range in it. Even the darker shades look very warm. Um, so if you have a deeper complexion, I hope your complexion is warm if you want to wear this because they look very warm. And the fair isn't very fair. But I love the formula of this. The coverage is so good. It leaves a beautiful finish on the skin. You can le you can watch that video. Um, it's been about a week since I put that video out. It says it has 24 hours of wear. Um, this is what the bottle looks like. It was like $13.99 at Target. I love the finish of this. I think it's so beautiful. It honestly does wear really well compared to a lot of my other affordable foundations. I do have some high-end foundations that wear a little bit better, like the Urban Decay Stay Naked and um, the face tape if you like really set it well. But this is a really beautiful foundation. The finish is so pretty. I love the coverage on it. It is definitely like one of those things I want to build up because you can kind of get running away with like how much product you put on your face and it looks a little bit cakey so I definitely build it up from medium to full coverage super easily because a lot of product or a little bit of product is a long way I'm really liking this it's really nice I just wish it was a little bit paler you know just a little bit the other foundation I have is the one I'm wearing today and honestly looks like a fantastic match to my neck and everything right now because I use a really light concealer but this is the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiant Perfecting Foundation. This is the shade 1CO Cameo. The original one I got was like shell, I think. It was too dark, like too dark. This is still a little tinted to me. It's a little a bit of a bronzier finish of foundation. But if you could put a lighter concealer down, honestly, they mush together perfectly. When you set it, all looks beautiful and even. Like, this is a very natural barely there finish you use a little bit or you can use some and build it up to like a light coverage i usually like a full full coverage and this looks full coverage on me like it's beautiful i don't know what it is about this foundation it's because it doesn't look like thick on your skin it doesn't look like it's a very full coverage foundation it is very light very natural finish but for some reason when i like do my concealer, which I don't conceal everywhere. I just kind of conceal right here and I'm on under eyes. And then I set my face. It looks like I did a full face of makeup already. Like this, like if you look at my cheeks, there's just the foundation. My forehead is just the foundation. The cheeks are just the foundation besides that spot, that 
bolder on my face. But like all this is just this really lightweight foundation. It makes my skin naturally look really pretty without a lot of product. Like I probably did two pumps throughout my entire face because it is darker for me so I don't use a ton of it. But honestly a little bit of foundation doesn't have too much coverage of it but it makes my actual skin look beautifully even. It's magic. I love it a lot. I just wish the Laura Mercier powders were fair enough for me to use because I feel like that combination would be magical. Now the concealer that saved the day for me on this look um, to make everything match perfectly is the Dose of Colors Concealer, the Meet Your Hue Foundation or Meet Your Hue Concealer. This is in 02 Fair. We also use this in this full face of first impressions video. This is way too white for me. Like this is white. And I really wanted to like go to Ulta and return this and get a better shade but it's only online and I don't know how to do online returns very well. Um, so I guess I go to an Ulta store and return it and then order it again online but um, this is the shade I have right now. Zero Two is so white. It's so white. I can't believe this is this pale. Um, I think it's great that they come in this pair, but online I did not think it would be this white when I got it in my hands. But that's the concealer that I'm wearing today and a little bit of shape tape on the boulder on my face. But with a tiny baby bit of like orange eyeshadow to color correct, this is a beautiful concealer. I was not sold on it at first and I think it's because it was so light and it really didn't cover up too much of my under eyes. I could still see a lot of darkness. But with a baby bit of color corrector, this is a beautiful finish of concealer. I absolutely love it. I do need a different shade, but this is a beautiful concealer. It lasts really well throughout the day. It blends out really nicely as well. Um, it's not shape tape level of coverage, but it's still really good. So I'm definitely into it, and I want to get the right shade of it because I think I'd use it a ton. Okay, so last, like, prep face stuff, I don't know, <laughs> is the Milk Makeup Blur Powder in Translucent Light. So, in a previous video where I used this, I took, like, I showed you I took the cap, like, the Sealy cap off, and I cut a hole in the net because I feel like this little mesh did not give me enough powder out of it, so I cut a hole to get more powder out so I could, like, you know, shake the powder and get more product on the top of the cap to use every day, so I definitely needed to cut it, and I didn't like the little cappy thing. So the packaging, not my favorite, even though it does look beautiful packaging. Functionality packaging, not my favorite at all, but the powder itself is so nice. I did use it today to set my face. A little bit goes a long way on a brush, like you put a little bit on a brush, it really does set your face really quickly, even with a big powder brush, just dust a little bit on. It, it goes far, like the little bit of powder on the brush goes far. I do like setting my under eyes on a sponge with this powder. I feel like it does make them too yellow, but it does kind of settle them down. Like, obviously my under eyes aren't stark white like that concealer was. I really like this. I'm really into it. I feel like the finish is really soft on my skin. It doesn't enhance texture. It doesn't enhance pores. It's a really nice kind of blurring powder, and I'm definitely probably going to repurchase this. I just repurchased another Cover FX one recently, and I just repurchased like a two or three weeks ago another Anastasia powder before I got this one because I've been really into setting powders lately. But if it came down to the Cover FX or this Milk Makeup powder, I'd probably use this one because it's slightly less yellow, but I love the Cover FX finish. But then the Anastasia powder gives you so much more product, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what I run out of and what I repurchase because I love all three of those powders so much. Okay, so next up I have two fails of sponges. I'm sorry. So this is the Laura Mercier. That looks nasty. We'll show you this clean side. Wow. Um, this Laura Mercier. This is the second one I've tried. The first one I tried I just threw away. Um, and then I got another one and I was like, oh, let me like, actually use this. This is the sponge. It's the shape. It's weird. It's just really hard to use and it's too small. Like I said, I feel like my, my hand is holding half the sponge. I don't have that much time to like use the sponge. It's just a really weird shape. It's too small for me. Not a fan, but I do like the texture of it. I'm probably just going to throw that away after this video. And then the other one, I love, okay, I love the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer. So good. So hydrating. So nice. I hate, with a passion, this stupid sponge that comes with the collection. This Pretty Fast Precision Blending Sponge. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, this is it. First of all, super teeny tiny, but it's for concealer. I thought it'd be a cute moment. It, even when you like fluff it up with water and stuff, it's not the most practical for like the flat side underneath the eyes. It helps blend it, but it's still a little bit dense. The texture doesn't really want to help blend it out very much. It's a lot of work to blend your concealer out with this sponge just because of the texture itself and the size doesn't make it like too convenient either. Definitely not a fan. I'm probably going to throw both these sponges away. 
now that I've talked about them on my channel because I'm like, ugh, every time I see them, I don't like them at all. For face palettes, we have three here. So the first one is from the Ipsy Glam Bag Plus this month. It is the Gigi Gorgeous, the Six Sculpt Bronzer Duo. Um, so I know it says bronzer duo, but I really think this was meant for contouring. And I've been using this a lot. I used the contour for my contour today. Um, and the contour shade is honestly not that bad, but it is a little bit inconsistent. I find like on certain parts of the face, it wants to blend out more than the others. So I think if you have a different shaped face than me, it might be difficult to blend out. Like where I have like a little bit of a divot right here, doesn't really want to blend sometimes. But on my forehead where it's really smooth, it's absolutely fine. So I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't like the other side, this bronzery side, this side side. I feel like it's really warm. And I feel like this is really cool. So this reminds me of a contour color. This reminds me of a bronzer color, even though it's both bronzers. But I feel like if you have a different complexion than me, like a medium complexion, these will probably work out great. Um, if you have a really, really warm skin tone, though, I feel like this come off really ashy. And this probably wouldn't still be warm enough for you. So it's a really weird combination. I do like the contour side, and I'll probably still keep using it. I probably will not get much use out of the bronzer side, though, just because it's really warm. But for being an Ipsy... I'm not mad about this at all. Like, I think it's a pretty decent product for being an Ipsy and for being an Ipsy brand thing because it's from Ipsy itself and Gigi Gorgeous. So I like the contour shade. It's a little bit hard to, like, to blend to some places, but it is still really cool toned so I can wear it. And then the bronzer shade, not a fan. I do find it's like when I have a big blending brush or a big contouring brush, it is a little bit difficult to get just this side of the pan because it is pretty small little sliver here. But it's fine. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Next up is another product we talked about in that Full Face First Impressions. A lot of these things were in there and I've been using them ever since. So this is the Ofra Snuggle Up Duo. This did come broken. I repressed the highlighter side. It's fine. Um, so this is it. I used the blush and the highlight today for this look. So the blush is mixed in with another blush. And then the highlight is just the Snuggle Up Highlighter. I love it. It's like a really light champagne-y highlight. I think it's really pretty. It is a little bit hard pan, but since I did repress it, I feel like that's probably the reason for that because typically they're very soft and it was apparently soft enough to break in shipping. But I love the highlight. It's a very pale champagne. It's so pretty. I even used it for my inner corner highlight. When it doesn't really pop in the inner corner highlight, it's okay for the inner corner highlight, but for the face, it's really, really pretty. And I've been trying to get dewy looking skin lately, so I feel like this kind of helps a little bit. But I love the blush. The blush is so soft and subtle. The name Snuggle Up with this kind of color of blush really makes me think of like like a little a nice soft blanket you're cuddling up to. I don't know. I'm into this duo. I think it's very nice. Okay, so lastly for face palettes, this was in the BoxyCharm Premium Box for the month. So this is the Natasha Denone Bloom um, blush and glow palette. I was so intimidated by this when I first got it and you guys were like, you can still use those creams. These two are creams. There's like a little, it's like a little, um, little door over it. And, um, I was still intimidated, but I did give this a shot. Um, so I've been using these a lot. I use these today. I mixed the blush and the highlight together to kind of like make my cheeks look more glowy. So the blush is mixed in with the snuggle up blush and the highlighter was mixed in with these blush shades. So I just mixed these two together, put them on my cheeks to make my skin look a little more glowy on the cheek area. I did try both the glowy cream and the blush cream. I still find that even really blurred out, this is too red for my skin tone because I am very cool toned skin. So this blurred out, I did make it work. I used it as a cream blush before I set my foundation and everything. And this was a really nice blush color for me as well. So I know it's a glow cream base, but I kind of put it right between my like blushy area and my highlight area. And I thought it was really nice. So this, this shade I like, I made this work, but it was a lot more difficult to use than I expected just because it is too dark for me. And then I love these two shades. I use this as like a foundation, I mean a blush mixer. I use the blushy shade as well as the highlight shade mixed together on a big powder brush to get like a good glowy blushy mix. And I really like this palette. I'm going to keep using it obviously, but I don't think I'll ever get too much use out of that shade. Okay, so let's move on to some eyeshadow palettes now. We have a few. So firstly, the Conspiracy palette. I've used this a bunch. I really like it. We're going to go ahead and use this right now because I feel like I need more inner corner highlight on. My favorite shade from this palette is Ranch, which is an icy white shade. I really love the color story in here. Um, I think the quality of the shadows are really nice. A couple of them are more dry than others, but not in like, like a bad way or anything. I don't find that the yellow is the most long wearing in the world. I feel like I can make it work and make it 
look really yellow and stuff, especially because I love yellow eyeshadow. I don't feel like the most long-wearing color in the world, but I'm really into this top row. I use the top row the most, honestly. I love the top row. It's very nice. This minty shade was a lot of work to make work, but everything else in here is so pretty. And this shade Trisha, which is the hot pink, will stain your eyelids like immediately after using, so be careful of that. But I think we're kind of used to staining eyeshadows at this point. I really love the palette. The packaging is out of this world, and um, the quality is really good too. Ooh. Okay, so aesthetic. Beautiful. Aesthetic. Oh my god. Okay, so I've only had this for about a week now, but I'm dying. I'm dying. I love this. I love this. I love it. It's the Lunar Beauty Moon Spell Palette. I know you can't see the shelf up there, but I put the Conspiracy Box, my Sigma Box, and the Lunar Beauty sleeve for this palette up on the shelf right there because it's just, it's a beautiful moment. This is such the most, it's the most beautiful packaging I've ever seen in my life. I'm just going to say I've never seen a palette that is so aesthetically pleasing to me as this one. So the Lunar Beauty Moonspell Palette. I got this late, but it is a Christmas gift, an early Christmas gift from Adam, and he's so sweet to give me this because it's the prettiest thing ever. Oh my gosh. I am so in love with this palette, you guys. You don't even know. You don't even know. Like, the beautiful greens. I've been wanting more green eyeshadows lately. I've just been, like, seeing green eyeshadow palettes and, like, ooh, I want to buy you. But I haven't been wearing them as much as I think I should be for as much as I want them. But this is just so beautiful. I didn't buy it on release because I was broke. And I was like, oh, there's some purples in there. I don't really wear purple eyeshadow. But when you have it in your hands, you're like, oh, there's only really three purples. The rest of them are so beautiful. They're so easy to work with. The metallics are perfection. The mattes blend out really nicely, too, except for the one shade... I think it was Sarah that didn't blend out 100% my favorite, but this is so beautiful and I am so grateful for having a really hot boyfriend who treats me well and gets me beautiful gifts. So I am super happy with this palette. I cannot wait to get more use out of it. Next eyeshadow palette might have been in last month's monthly favorites, but it is the Center Stage palette by Pink Euros Cosmetics. Again, hate the pink cover. It's ugly. It does not match the inside of this palette whatsoever. You see any pink inside here? Barely. But this is the center stage palette. I picked this up from Pinky Rose, no, Pinky Rose, Riley Rose, when I went to Orlando last month for the Bad Flower concert. I love this color story. I think it's so pretty. Not a fan of the two pressed glitters in here. Like, I could really do without those two shades. I'd probably prefer if they just weren't there at all. But this is just so pretty. I love the mustardy yellow. That's what sucked me in. And then a lot of these other brown tones are so pretty. This mustardy kind of color beautiful beautiful I love these browns mixed in with like these light shimmers on the lid I'm into it I'm into it a lot very nice and lastly is a new palette I'm wearing it today it's a very subtle simple look and I've worn it past three days I think in a row so this is the bare necessities palette by ColourPop it's a $30 palette you get 30 shades in here so I feel like that makes sense this is what it looks like it look when I opened this I was like what was the name of the palette? Violet Voss Holy Grail. That's what I thought of when I saw this. And I like this more. I never got a lot of use out of the Violet Voss Holy Grail. This is so beautiful. It just has so many different finishes in here. You have kind of a super shocky shadow shades. And some of these you have beautiful mattes. You have subtle metallics. Um, oh wait, this one's more subtle. This one's more like a subtle, satiny, beautiful, kind of shimmery shade. Then you have regular metallic shades. You have beautiful mattes in here. The mattes blend out so good. You have the mattes with a little bit of reflex of glitter in here. There's just a lot of different finishes in this palette and I'm in love because a lot of these like colors in here are really cool tone which I love but and then you have like a color like this like a burgundy maroony color. Again that I love. How many times am I going to say I love it? Only thing I was wishing in here was for like a mustard shade. I feel like there was a mustard shade in here I'd be all over it but there's not. That's the only downfall but other than that I'm loving this palette. Loving it so much. Alrighty, next up for eyes, we have two Stila's here. And these are like, they're alright. They're okay. Nah, 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 nah. I think I like the glitter and glow ones, like, a lot more than the rest of the formulas. So we have the Stila Glitter Mystery in Mythical. I got this for $3 at TJ Maxx. Great deal. Definitely worth the $3 I paid. But I wouldn't pay the $24 or $21, $24 original price for these. So this is it. I'll most watch it for you, but... We used that in a Versa Impressions video too. It looks very pinky purpley in the container. 
and like sometimes it looks purple, sometimes it looks pink. So it's really beautiful, um, but it's not like wow, amazing beautifulness like Perlina and the rest of the glitter and glitters I've tried. It's okay, but I don't know if it's gonna pull more pink or purple each time I wear it. The other one that I got is the Stila Peach Pretense. I think I paid 12 bucks at Nordstrom Rack for this one, if I'm correct. So Peach Pretense is a just a liquid eyeshadow. It doesn't advertise as anything like glitter mystery, glitter and glow. It just says little white lies liquid eyeshadow. So this one is Peach Pretense and it's stunning, but I feel like it's not peachy enough. I feel like when it's called Peach Pretense be super peachy, it just comes off as slightly pink, especially under the lower lash line where I like put the liquid eyeshadow every day now because like I want right here. This is Perlina by Stila. I want that to look brighter and make my eyes look more awake and I think it looks really cute under there. This just isn't peachy enough. It comes off kind of pink, but I'm not getting that like peachy, like slightly yellow, peachy, orangey kind of color. It just looks like a pink eyeshadow. So both of these are really pretty. I don't regret buying them, especially the one for $3, but they're not the glitter and glow formula that I think I really want under lower lash line. Okay, so I have one eyeliner, and this is the Ciate London Stamp and Drag. This came in the Ipsy Glam Bag Plus this month. It is in collaboration with Courtney Act, who is stunning. Stunning. So, um, the stamp part of this, see if I can, oh, ah, I worked this time. Half the time I open this, I get, like, the ink stick that falls out, and I feel, like, fine, the end of it, and then this is stuck in the cap, the stamp is stuck in the cap, and I don't know how to, you know, it's a, it's a mess. This thing's kind of, like, eh, but I love the stamp. For being an eyeliner stamp. It's a little bit difficult. One side always wants to be higher than the other. But for being an eyeliner stamp, it doesn't bleed and actually it creates a really nice subtle wing. I don't want a crazy dramatic wing. I don't want something that's going to be like, whoa! I just want like a little tiny wing to make my eyes look like they're flaring out a little bit. This is the stamp itself. It's really nice. It is very precise. It does bleed in my hands a little bit now that I look at it on my hands. But on the eyes, I never have an issue with it. My favorite part of this though is the drag side because it's just a regular black eyeliner pen you can make it really subtle or you can just really press down because it's kind of like a felt tip and make it a lot thicker or like use the side of it obviously but I really like this I think it's really nice I like the drag side more than the stamp side because the stamp side wants to fall apart on me but I like the eyeliner because it's super black Alrighty guys, we have some lashes to talk about now the first ones we're talking about are the Anastasia Beverly Hills Gorgina Gorgina I bought this when I bought the milk powder <sighs> The Gorgina lashes. I've been talking a lot of Anastasia crap lately and I stand by everything I said. They're releasing too many things. But I saw this pair of lashes for 12 bucks and I feel like I needed more lashes in my life. So, you know, I bought them. It's fine. This is Gorgina. I've been wearing them a lot in my videos. I always tag the lipstick, eyeshadow, and lashes I'm wearing in the description box of these videos so you can see what I'm wearing if you're interested. I've been wearing these a lot. So I love the style. I love the little flaries. I think these are the only style that I saw in stores before that I was actually intrigued by. Uh, uh, and they're 12 bucks which is pretty affordable and I'm pretty into it the only thing is I always have an issue with the band on these lifting up like every time I wear these lashes I have to touch up my eyelashes you know what I mean like one side wants to come up the, sit the middle lifts or the inner corner lifts every single time on one eye they switch which eye it is but the band never wants to stay down is my only complaint. They're beautiful. I love the thin band on them. I think it's very nice. However, they always want to lift. I feel like there's not enough room on this very thin band for the glue to kind of like collect. You know what I mean? Like you're rubbing the glue on it. I feel like there's not enough room for that to like really stick. Um, so really thin band makes it hard for the glue to stay down. But I still keep wearing them because I love the style. Next up are the lashes that I'm wearing today, which is the Paint Spa Lashes in Blue by Glam Light. We just did the unboxing of the Glam Light Mystery Box. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. I was so impressed by that mystery box. I was so impressed by it. I think I paid $45 and I got a lot of good products out of there. So this is the blue lashes. This is what the inside of the box looks like. It's the blue. And this is what they look like on my eyes. I put them out a little bit like far just to try to make my eyes look a little bit wider today. But I'm really into them. They look very beautiful and flary and pretty. I like them a little bit more than I like the burger lashes that I got in that box too. I wore the gesture. I'm kind of like, oh, they're right. I can kind of see the band separating from my real lashes a little bit. So they weren't like my absolute favorite. I love Deep Dish from Glam Light and the Pizza Lash so much. And then Carne Asada lashes from the Taco ones are so good too. But I really like these paint splashes. Like, they look really nice. Mm. 
mm, mm. they're really cute i just wish i filmed yesterday when i was wearing the burger lashes so we could like an opinion on what i'd look like with them but i will wear them in a future video obviously but i really like the paint swatches they're very nice next up i have two different opinions on these lashes that i got from Rogan Ruff, I believe it's called. I don't know. I always have a problem with the name of this brand. But I bought like $50 worth of the lashes because I was feeling crazy. And I shouldn't have done that. It's really expensive. But I love these. These are Slayer lashes Um, by them. They're so beautiful. They're so thick. They're so full. They're so spiky. I love the spikiness. They're super pretty. They're very like goth friendly I guess if you're saying something like that like that's what I think of when I see a style I'm like it's beautiful it's everything I love them this is a style I really really wanted anyways so I'm glad I picked these up I think this one was on its own or in the epic trio I bought love the Slayer lashes the other pair that I've tried I have three other pairs from them I've tried one other one um and then I haven't tried the other two yet but this is Nirvana this is the other style that I was like gagging dying had to have these were the two styles that I like when I was buying their lashes, like I have to have these two. One of them came in a trio that I bought, and the other one came on its own. I think Nirvana was on its own. But this is Nirvana. I know it's kind of hard to tell, like, in the package. I like the style. I love the flares. It's very light. It's very beautiful. But I feel like with the band on these, I definitely see the separation between my real lashes and the lash band for the fake lashes. I feel like it doesn't look completely realistic as far as realistic lashes go because they're not real and they're not gonna look real no one's lashes are this beautiful but I don't know I just like I could see the separation in the band it wasn't really impressing me but the style is so pretty that I'm gonna keep wearing them like it might not look the most realistic thing in the world but everyone knows my lashes are fake anyways so it doesn't really matter but I just wanted to point that out in case you hate that little bit of separation between because it doesn't really look realistic Lastly, we have liquid lipsticks, and we have two from Dose of Colors. These were like, I mean, you didn't get both. You got one or the other in the BoxyCharm this month, but this is the Nude Mood. It's what I'm wearing today on my lips. It looks very warm on me. It looks really cool on other people, but the Nude Mood liquid lipstick from Dose of Colors is really pretty. Uh, you don't ever see nudes in subscription boxes because it's not going to fit every skin tone. This, I feel like, would fit a lot of skin tones. I really like this one. Um, so I'm wearing it right now. It's very comfortable. I love just the colors formula. I just don't like their wand because it's a little bit too fluffy. You get little fuzzies and your lips aren't precise. So I use a disposable wand or like a reusable wand depending on the day to use my liquid lipsticks for those colors. It's really annoying because it's just, I don't know if you can tell. There's just a bunch of little furry fuzzies on the ends of these. And it doesn't give you like a really precise clean lip line. This is the other color I really like. It's called Charm. Now these two are sold in like a duo. But they're, all, they're sold out right now, so if they're back in stock, I'll still link them down below. All these products will be linked down below. But this is Charm. These came in like a duo together, but um, they were sold separately in the Boxy Charms. This Charm color is such a beautiful true red. It's very vampy. It's very beautiful. And I absolutely love the formula. It's super, super comfortable for a red lipstick. Anyways, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know down below how you feel about the new backdrop. It was a lot of time, a lot of effort, but hopefully it paid off. I know you guys are probably tired of looking at the same backdrop forever, so I wanted to, like, change it up a little bit, but still leave it bright and light and, like, leave plants and stuff back there. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, I'd love if you did that. We can be friends. It's free. I'll see you later. Bye.